Oh my gosh, what is happening? You mother. So we have the four-wheel camper fleet shell model, which means it's not really kitted out with a whole lot of these add-ons that you'll see with some of these four-wheel campers. Definitely no toilet, definitely no sink, and no refrigerator. We rely solely on a cooler, which is something we've always done regardless of what truck camper we've had. So I think that a lot of people go with the shell model, mm, not for the reason that we went for it. Maybe because they can make it into whatever they want it to be. Um, but we essentially went with it because it was the one we could find on Facebook Marketplace. So, ours is a 2019. It is pre-loved, pre-owned, and we have done some small little upgrades just to make it a bit more comfortable for us. That does make us a soft as ply, but I'm okay at that. If we wanted to be a little bit hardcore, we'd be tent camping after all. So, without further ado, less talky, more showy. standard in a shell we have in this version we do have a furnace furnace <laughs> we do have a furnace we also have a solar panel on the roof which is connected to our two uh, deep cycle batteries we do have these USB chargers and one of these 12 volt things what is that called like a cigarette lighter <laughs> I'm not really sure those work out fine, that's all we really need. Uh, we do have a pocket inverter uh, within this cabinet that we take with us, but we don't have an inverter or any other real outlets within this camper. Works out nice. Above the furnace area, we do have the small bit of storage. It's about four inches deep, and what we have in here is our coffee equipment. So we have this good old base camp, which we use with our collapsible uh, teapot and we can make some coffee some pour over coffee in here. So that's really nice Shell models come with these benches as you all are I'm sure abundantly aware of they don't have any cushion covers So that was the first thing we went and did I Created these cushions Which we have a third one that we want to make today and I'll walk you through that and then we got some lumbar pillows because why not? <laughs> Underneath these benches on both sides are these little storage areas. This is pretty much the only storage that you have inside the camper, which isn't a huge deal as you saw. We do have storage underneath the camper in the drawer system, so it works out great. We found these containers at Target. They are flexible plastic, so they can just slide right in here. I'm pretty sure they're about six inches deep. We have five, four, I'm sorry, four of these on this side, and then we have three on the other side. Pretty much immediately after using this camper a handful of times, we knew that we wanted some bench seating here and extra storage space, primarily for the four cushions that are for the bed that slides out to be north and south facing. So Chris used some extra materials that we had laying around, some two by fours, half inch plywood, this is just a piece of flooring that he screwed right in to be the front plate of this seating area. 
On the project to do, what I have is an extra cushion that I am going to make today. That will give us a U-shape seating area. You can kick a leg up while you're sipping some coffee. Um, be comfortable, but again, it holds our cushion so that they're not kind of sliding all over the place, which we found them often like pressed up against the door whenever we were got to our destination. So just keeps them a little bit more confined, gives us that U-shaped seating. And ultimately what would be great is we can add a little rail track here, another cushion, piece of wood, and then we have almost a third person sleeping arrangement so that we can sleep two people up top and then one person down here. There are situations where we do have, you know, a guest with us. Chris might go out with his friends, all of his buddies. We've had, my mother-in-law has stayed with us in the camper before um, whenever we've gone out, but this is working out great so far. Again, just need to make that cushion. And I can't forget that a long time ago, Chris actually hand carved and painted this trout. So happy to be able to add that to the front plate of this bench. Dress it up a little bit. Ah, the bed area. So this is a cab over bed. It's east to west facing. If you don't extend it all the way out and add those four cushion covers that are stored below in that storage container that we created. Chris says that he could sleep east to west in a bind. I'm 5'4", he's 6'4", so I think that he would probably be either in the fetal position or kicking me directly in the middle of my back all night. But thankfully this does extend out and honestly it's bigger than the bed that is in our house. I think it's close to a king size bed, I'm not sure, I could be wrong on that, but it is certainly spacious, so that works out nicely for us. Now. We do, I must confess, keep our bedding kind of like this without the cushions or the pillows. We do keep this on when we lower the top. That is ill-advised, I think, but it hasn't been a problem for us so far. As long as we're very cautious about um, making sure the sides are sucked in uh, whenever we do lower the top of the camper and making sure this is as flat as possible, as long as we put the pillows down below, it's been fine, honestly, but it's pretty comfortable. No complaints. Like I said, it could be tent camping on a ground, freezing cold. It's really luxurious, I'm telling you. So these campers do not have a trash can, kind of built in, obviously. So I took this little burlap sack and modified it down to make this trash can. It's not perfect, but essentially I just take a trash bag and I paper clip or clip that on there and it serves its purpose and I don't know, I think it looks a little cool. So we're back inside about to create that third cushion cover that I had mentioned while we're in the truck camper. This will finish off that U-shaped seating and go over that storage box that Chris had crafted up. Now. Before we had purchased our last truck camper, which was a used 2010 Palomino Bronco 800, I had absolutely no idea how to sew. I learned it through a YouTube video that I will link um, either up here in the corner or down in the description below, whichever I can honestly figure out how to do. And that helped me tremendously. So before I had actually sewed our last cushion covers, and before I sewed the current ones that we have in our truck camper. The last time I had done any sewing was in our um, middle school home ec class, and I'm pretty sure I did create a lopsided pillow. It was atrocious. So if I can do it, I just wanna assure you that you can do it too if you're looking to really create a more comfortable space within your shell model or even just finish off uh, some current cushions, recover them that you might have in one of your campers. And at the end of the day, you can just remind yourself that, hey, this is a truck camper or if you have just any other camper, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. Our foam. We went with a three inch high density foam for these cushions. No scientific reason as to why we went with a three inch foam. I just recommend you go with your gut or yeah, go with your butt and you can't go wrong. I had mentioned that YouTube tutorial for how to create box cushion covers. I highly, highly recommend that you access that video and watch it if you are trying to make these for your camper. You are going to miss 
all of the critical details and end up with probably inside out, backwards and upside down cushions. So to avoid all of that, go ahead and watch her video. Also, she has a very calming voice that makes you so much less terrified of cutting and destroying the fabric you just purchased. Speaking of fabric, you'll notice in our last truck camper, we went with the extremely practical light cream colored cushions. So to avoid the neurotic sense of, I have to watch everything I do in this truck camper to avoid normal wear and tear on these cushions, we went with this blue and cream woven fabric that should hide some of that normal uh, wear and tear marks and scuffing that you'll get whenever you're naturally in a truck camper. So without further ado, Let's get to it. Oh, they're... Oh, look at that. That's what one might call a rough start. Wasn't that easy?